Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Nina Barlow. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. I'm very excited for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Long time coming. Uh, um, as always, we're socially distanced. We did it before it was mandated or popular because it's the only way we can do the podcast. So Ross okay. is on the East Coast. I'm in the Midwest. And Nina's in Arizona. Yep. I almost, I had a panic moment there and I was like, wait, what state did she tell me a second <laughs> ago? That is a valid question. <laughs> is it the time of year? Anything. Yeah. Is it the time of year where Utah and Arizona are different times or are they at the same time right now? Um, no, we're an hour apart. Arizona is, uh, you know, we don't change time zones here. So all the rest of y'all are the ones that have a problem. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you drive north and you yes. gain or lose an hour. I lose an hour. So right. yeah. Yeah. That's that and, always... and to complicate matters, the Navajo Reservation, which comprises 28% of the state, uh, is uh, th- does change. So they, so they change. The rest yeah, of Arizona sure. does. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like there. I know there are counties in Indiana where it's like based on the county. It's like which time zone they're in, central or eastern. Oh, so yeah, no, no. yeah, yeah. Time zones are fun. Also, internationally, no one does daylight saving time. <laughs> recently i realized some of my work meetings adjusted times for me but for them at the same they're, they're like my core was like why is this an hour later for us and i was like well we do daylight savings time yep. and no one else does <laughs> it's like the metric system yeah uh <laughs> why <laughs> you know uh, no i love the metric system i taught middle school science for 10 years ross likewise i also it makes, I, I it makes a lot of sense the imperial U.S. standard system is the one that should be done away with. No, I think we've had this uh, discussion. It's like Americans will we will, will go out of our way to use absolutely anything else but the metric system. Like we'll use, you <laughs> know, the, the wheelbase on that truck is seven alligators. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, that truck's yeah. huge. <laughs> that is, well, right. it depends on the size of the alligator. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. like a, a grown alligator. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I spent enough time in Florida to know if a baby gator makes a high pitched noise that we should run. Because not only is mom coming to protect the baby gator, dad's coming to eat the baby gator. See, I think I would be irresponsible if I didn't ask you to uh, do an impersonation of that sound. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah right. That's <laughs> I, I feel like you can imagine it. <laughs> it's like a high. Like it's a high pitch E. I don't know my voice will get to the octave that they actually get to. So, so that was the sound of when the dinosaurs were around. A hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. No, that was yeah. like I I learned that. So Nina, for for context, I spent three years teaching middle school in Florida awesome. and uh, middle school science, and so like my first my first mentor meeting was with my mentor on a wave runner in the Gulf, which was pretty awesome because we weren't stuck in a building. But then like time after that, I learned a lot of thing about gators that I never wanted to know. And one of them was, was that high pitch noise. Um, when you see a little one, you're like, oh, it's adorable. Like, and it makes the noise. That is absolutely the time to not be around because there are multiple adults coming to that location. Because so, mom <laughs> be wants the... to keep it alive and dad wants a snack. Like it's awful. That might be the first time <laughs> adorable and alligator have ever been used in the same sentence. <laughs> Some people think they're cute. That's not me. <laughs> no, just, just no. Okay, well, enough alligators for tonight. So the good news oh, is in the show notes, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it will come back yeah. up again on the show at some point because I saw mountain biking videos the other day with gators in it. And I was like, how? What? Yeah, I I don't know. I The internet's a weird place. I don't know what's real anymore, Ross. So it's Florida. Right. Right. Uh, so you have no updates. I got like, nothing, I feel like it's nothing fun. Yeah. This and week. this isn't a night where we've recorded like back-to-back shows in two nights. Yep. Like you had yep. a gap here, dude. Like, I know. Um, <laughs> since that quadding trip a couple of weeks back, I've, you know, uh, I'm playing with the scrambler a little bit just to get a cargo box situation figured out. And I'm probably going to use the box that was on the Kawasaki brute force that I had for about 12 years. Um, she so sparked some interest there. Nina turned her head. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love hearing the, the stuff people figure out, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's uh it's not a perfect fit. It's going to, it's going to take a little um, finagling, but it's a cool little full circle thing. You know, I love using old parts and recycling things from yeah. old vehicles onto new vehicles. You know, I, I had a Chevy Avalanche and, and we put the uh, like the pre-runner bar on it. That was on my dad's Yukon in the nineties. Oh you wow! Know, that kind of stuff oh. is is I love doing that. So yeah, other than that, I have no updates. 
Will, will you use zip ties? God, no. Zip ties won't hold. Okay, good. <laughs> no, <laughs> just wanted to make no, sure. No, no, no. No, this is, <laughs> we're talking like, you know, like high grade steel bolts and good clamps. So, yeah. I like it. What's, what's happening with you? Uh, my update is I've messed up a little. So, uh, Nina, you, you saw the Sequoia uh, out in Moab, yeah. which is our my wife's daily driver that I put skid plates and sliders on and took to Moab. So the the Toyos were already on it, um, stock ride height. That's still her daily driver. So it came back with its couple of badges of honor from Wipeout Hill on the rear bumper, and she was kind of like, "You're not doing that again." And I was like, "Okay, well, <laughs> it's a valid <laughs> point, but it impressed so a lot of people." <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that there's there's different levels that what I found is the the term uh, consequential damage is very subjective. So <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> this that was consequential, yeah. it sounds like that goes hand <laughs> yeah. in hand with uh with mechanical sympathy. Yes. <laughs> there there were a number of people that suggested I happen to rip the rear bumper off so I could replace it with something else. And I was like, I really enjoy my marriage, guys. I'm not yeah. I'm not putting like also, in the future we can talk about that, but for now, we're gonna play it safe. Um, right before we drove that out to Moab though, I purchased a 2000 LX 470. Awesome. Um, my oldest is going to be of driving age this summer to drive himself to school and work. And so that, that was going to be like our third vehicle we added. Um, the, the only issue with that is I absolutely love this truck. And I don't <laughs> knew it. I, I don't it, really right? want to turn it over to my teenager. <laughs> Um, right. I mean, who saw that coming? I mean, yeah, I definitely, <laughs> kind of did. Definitely Ross not the guy. The yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, called it from, you know, a hundred miles out, you know, well, Chris had, he had an 80, he had a hundred, you know, he had a bunch of other Toyotas and like nobody ever expected you to want to keep it at, for your own. <laughs> that wasn't part of the reason you sought out an already lifted. You know, well, and like, like that's, that's the best part is so it already has the iron man two inch lift underneath it oh my gosh my Houston skills are awful right now so i'm trying to get to a photo of it uh -huh. um i already have it so it already has an iron man four by four two inch lift underneath it the ahc has been deleted um there's no arrow codes from it i've already changed a coil pack on it once i did that last week that or two weeks ago now um it's got the kmc wheels it's got the oversized ko uh or toyo open country at at 82s no, AT3s. Oh, they're two. They're, yeah, I thought they're, they're AT3s. Threes. They're okay. AT3s. Uh, my brain just stopped for a second. It just needs <laughs> skid plates and sliders, and we're ready to go camping. So a little bit of I am going to let him continue to drive it for school. We're, in, we're not at a point where I can just go willy-nilly and, and acquire something else for him right now. Um, so I am going to let him keep driving it for a little bit, but it's definitely going to be my trail rig. And I just uh, texted with some buddies the other day. I definitely think I have a camping trip coming up in May. Um I'm going to take this and I'm super excited. I drove it to more expo down in Springfield and back and just, it ran great. It's super smooth. I just, even with the the bigger all terrains on it, like it sits at like 70, 75 on the highway and doesn't seem to care at all. I mean, it sucks gas like crazy. Um, <laughs> as they do. As, as hundred series do. Like I, I maybe have traded some text with the guys at long range america to be like hey guys <laughs> what's up <laughs> that yeah. 40 gallon tank would be amazing <laughs> so. it, is it 40 or no i'm thinking of the one for the 200 there's yeah. a 33 and a 40 and then mm -hmm. there's an auxiliary where you can put where the rear spare is as well so there if, if i truly wanted to i think you can get close to 80 gallons of gas on it wow that doesn't sound dangerous at all which I don't have a bladder for 80 gallons of gas. Like I, <laughs> as also, much as I want that. <laughs> dude, 80 gas is eight pounds a gallon. That is a shit ton of weight that you Yeah, that's a lot of weight. Like, that, that's yeah, then you're talking about changing, you know, the springs for heavier duty springs and like going through tires quickly. And right. Yeah. But Just carry a five gallon jerry yeah. can, call it right of backs or something. Which I have a five gallon jerry can, so we're we're Beautiful. good. I, it was so, in the Sequoia when I was out in Moab. What is the range? What's <laughs> the current? What's the, what is the the gas tank on it? The factory gas tank. Uh, on? it's like 20, 25, 26. Oh, so it still gets like two fifty to three hundred, like depending on like how we're driving it. Um, my son is not going to see good range because the oh, like he he is in an academic program, so we have a high school half mile from our house that he could walk to. 
but he uh, applied to a program and was accepted to the program. So he actually goes to high school on the far side of town, about 20 minutes away. And the best and only way to get there is literally a main artery stop lighted street yeah. with like 30 traffic lights between here and there. <laughs> so sounds like single digits. Yeah. He's, he's going to see like 10. He's gonna be so like, 10, is that imp- I mean, I drive a power wagon, so I'm like, ooh, 10. That's <laughs> right. <awesome. laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> what year is your power wagon? I just uh sold my 2017 to one of my guys and uh picked up a 23. Okay. It's yeah. so interesting. The power wagon crowd, it seems like some people who actually run, you know, like stick with 35s and do a fair amount of highway oh, driving. Oh, or, there's or, Ellie. Look at that. Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. I love <laughs> power wagons. So I'm, I'm asking questions, thinking of prospective ownership, you know, um, it seems like some people get like 16, 17, if they're doing a bunch of highway and, you know, not running 75 yeah. pound tires. Yeah. Like she would get the best I ever got with her. That's Ellie in the photo. Um, she's my 2017. And so uh, 35s is what I put on the power wagon. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I would get about, you know, 15 or so anytime, you know, and she had just a two inch leveling kit. So you bring that up every inch, you seem to lose a mile per gallon. At oh least. yeah. Yeah. The wind is just hitting an, an even more vertical. Yeah. But it's uh, good. the new one. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm getting like nine. I haven't, I haven't seen double digits yet, but I, you know, I had probably 70 miles on her when I hooked up the trailer and went to Moab, you know, and then it's mm. been four wheeling. So I haven't really actually, yeah. In her first okay. 1500 miles, she hasn't gotten out on the highway just to run by herself on the highway with tires aired up. So. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's a, that's a good way to get yeah. crappy gas mileage. Yeah. <laughs> you don't buy them for the gas mileage. No. Yeah. Well, like, like you seems, me. you seem to be the person who has the ultimate use case for a power wagon. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Like I, I love yep. talking about them. Yep. Yeah. I had, um, let's see, what do we see? So, uh, yeah. So out at Easter Jeep Safari, I towed out my, uh, well, my diesel Wrangler actually is what I towed out because my four by E was out of commission at that moment. Um, that is not mine in the photo. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh... But it's amazing. <laughs> but, yeah, interestingly, it is a four by E. It's a four by E um, mm. with the SJ. We call that the SJ, you know, but it's a four by E underneath. So it's a Mark Allen special. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that one. That was yeah. my fa- of all yeah. of the concepts. I love it. It was so oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so are all my favorite right do you want to give a short introduction to yourself now a short introduction <laughs> um Elevator so i own and operate Bar- barlow adventures um i started that company in 2004 and uh to provide you know four-wheel drive trips and training as well as jeep rentals that got us into jeep rentals later and um what i tell people is i came back from college and took a uh, tour, took a tour, took a job as a tour guide, a Jeep tour guide, just until I, you know, settled down and got a real job sort of a thing. And, <laughs> and here we are 30 years later, still waiting for that whole settling down, <laughs> getting real job thing. So. <laughs> How was that for a short intro? <laughs> That's perfect. Because that, that leads me to like, how, how did you get into off-roading? I grew up with it. Um, my dad was quite the explorer. He, I definitely uh, inherited the "I have to know where that road goes" gene yes. from him. You know? <laughs> okay. And I grew up on a ranch, you know, so driving the tractor by ten and the the trucks and the Bronco and by by twelve, you know, whenever we could reach the pedals and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was your first four by four? My first personal four by four. Let me think about this would have been a 93 YJ and it was piss yellow. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Familiar with, I, the reason that I'm in off-roading is because my dad had, you know, been in Broncos and I grew up in the back of a YJ. So yeah. Close to <laughs> yep. And I, I picked one up, you know, I, I've, uh, developed this, um, you know, like my dogs are all rescues and all of my old Jeeps have been rescues. So like over the last, you know, 15, 20 years, 
if I if I didn't have something brand new to it was typically something that was found in a field and had been there for at least five years, you know, basically mm -hmm. waiting to uh go back to nature or something. And, and earth, I had yes. to yeah, and, and I I just I have to get them out of the field, save them, you know, get them running and uh, you know operating and then I get tired of them so I never like mm -hmm. do the full restoration and, and all that it's like I just get them to where we can go get ice cream you know and go for a little <laughs> and then and I'm bored then I'm done it's time yep. to move on you know <laughs> that's funny so from a YJ now it's power wagon and a four by E and then eco diesel yeah. and what else is in the in your personal fleet, not the, um, that, not the rental uh, fleet. well we ha we have a, a Grand Cherokee in the family we that's the that's a we call that's the dog's favorite car of course ah. grand cherokee that's the easiest to get in and out of you know which uh what era of grand cherokee uh 2017 okay yeah so and wk2 wk yep my parents and, have one. Uh, that's been a great car of course is it the uh, white one no no it's, <laughs> it's charcoal gray. yeah you wouldn't that you we call it the you said i can cuss on this show right we call yeah. it yeah oh. Yeah, that one's not mine. That's a client's. Yeah, there you probably won't see. There's maybe two photos of it ever on social media. <laughs> okay. We call it the fuck you car. It's, it has no <laughs> Barlow decals on it, no markings. It's totally in the totally invisible like soccer That's funny. car. That's yeah. the one yeah. you That's can actually really flip people off in traffic and no one yeah, will be able exactly. to track you down yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Except so now we've just ruined was, that on the show. Like I in know. Sedona yeah. or Moab. Yeah. So if you're in Arizona and you get flipped off by a charcoal <laughs> Greg WK2, you know. <laughs> Nowhere to look. <laughs> right. There's a there's only a one in three hundred thousand chance oh. that Nina Barlow's, you know. <laughs> <No>. Seriously. <laughs> okay. So what is that the whole L personal fleet? Literally I can pull onto I can pull uh, uh into the driveway at like our Sedona store and the staff will not recognize me. You know, they'll come out to the Oh, can we help you? Oh, it's you. Okay. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> literally the most invisible <laughs> part of it. I love it. <laughs> So that's and, that that is something I've messed up with on the LX already. I figured out because it's a yeah. hundred series LX. It's got yeah. the wheels and tires on it and it's got the roof rack. Like I've already noticed. Yeah. It's I, totally I, identifiable. I, yeah. And I watched a kid almost crash himself trying to take video from a side view mirror awesome. in his first gen sequoia. I'm like, dude, not worth it. Like I get yeah. it. It's not, I understand what you're doing, but like be safe. Like maybe he's yeah. trying to crash the sequoia. <laughs> or maybe Collect his lower control arm quit who knows that happens oh, yeah. almost. <laughs> that was ball joints same difference isn't yeah. it yeah different means the same i'm, yeah. I'm down on the lower end of control no front wheel <laughs> yeah. oh that's funny so nina can you tell us about how barlow adventures has evolved over the years i'm biting my tongue to not put three follow-up questions in. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so why don't, why don't we start i know there? i i started in hail you know to take a Stuck in air to answer the question, yep. and I'm like, maybe I should breathe this one out and wait for him to finish his. <laughs> That's it. That's the thought. <laughs> this show is fantastic. I'm super on board with tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's it it did start out as just uh you know just just offering training um, to private individuals, and we've evolved to um, doing you know group classes, and you know of course we added Jeep rentals to the mix and. And we do a lot more, you know, corporate and government work now, um, maybe than anything as far as the training side of the business goes. Hmm. And um, and that's that's really interesting. I mean, we were just going through, um, you know, we've done everything from like with Falcon Tires, we do, you know, training for their dealers and stuff when they have, you know, a new new tire design come out and yeah. um, Falcon Academies. And then um, last week I was in Moab and I was training um, some BLM rangers uh, to be trainers for the rest of their department. So we were, hmm. we've done um, the last couple of years, I've really started thinking a lot more about the next generation. And honestly, I need to credit Jesse Combs with, with that. She's very much thinking about, you know, bringing up more women into the industry. And although the, the woman focus of it hasn't been my thing, it is like, you know, I'm not getting any younger. Um, we, this is this is information education that we don't want to, you know, lose. We want to bring that bring up that next generation um, to have these skills. And so, training trainers has been something that 
has really come, I've been spending a lot more time on in the last couple of years, probably most of my time in the last couple of years. Um, and, uh, and of course, as you know, you know, we, we get to do a lot of work with Jeep with both the engineering and the marketing side. And so, you know, that's a lot of fun to see both ends of that. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And those were things, you know, you don't necessarily foresee, you know, 20 years right. ago. <laughs> right. Maintaining a presence and being the knowledgeable, you know, go-to in the area. Yeah. Lends well to it. Yeah. And you, uh, then you have your hand in helping out people like Chris coming down obstacles on, uh, on rallies. Uh, yes. <laughs> that was my yep. favorite part of the rally. <laughs> because <laughs> it the joke went over the radio like they were like, like hey should we start going i think N nina can spot and somebody's like is she any good like uh, that was the joke going back and forth and it didn't process in my head until i got there and then saw scott and then saw you and i was like all right now i got all of it like, <laughs> <laughs> chris texted Which, me he was like dude i finally gave her a sticker <laughs> <laughs> i finally met nina in person <laughs> <laughs> that's why you have to go on the rally thrust <laughs> rub it in dude rub it in <laughs> you could have flown and that was yeah. fun we had we had international media with us when uh when we ran into you guys at the top of wipeout hill so that was super fun for them so to get to see that you know they got to watch people. all of our collection yeah. go down and yeah. then just get in stock wranglers and go <laughs> straight down no big deal yeah it, it was very anticlimactic so I, you know you actually kind of ruined my wah for the group it was like ooh, wipeout hill and they're like Oh, but like there's a power wagon with a trailer and you Dude, know, Lauren, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren did almost everything with that trailer on that trip. Like I was, yeah. I was pretty impressed. Right. Chris, where do you want to go for from here? You want to keep talking about this kind of stuff? Should we pivot to I, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Wherever. Okay. Yeah. Like, there's what, a so lot. I mean, we, we talk about like tread lightly stuff and education. Yeah. Uh, we mm -hmm. can talk about Oh man, I so I've been out on trail when 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 you know yesterday um when I got back and got your email I was just I I was coming off of we've had a we have a a big um trail repair project that we're doing in Sedona this week and um and so yesterday I was directing um a big a case tractor, you know, a loader. We were moving boulders and dirt around and fixing a a creek bed that got destroyed in the you know the heavy winter as you know in the west. I think you guys didn't have winter. We got all of your winter or something. <laughs> we it didn't get to me. It snowed yeah. twice here yeah. and I didn't have to shovel. Like, Yeah, we, we had two snow days, which is like we have one every 10 years and we had two this winter. It was a big deal. <laughs> big deal. <That's> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, so it um, there's there's been a lot of... Uh, it's interesting on the trail. Um, like we've had a couple of negative encounters while we've been out there working on the trail. And it's like, uh, it's been, it's been the, the, you know, 99% of people are out there. They're happy to be out there. They recognize they're out there having fun. And then you get that one guy who's just being an entitled prick. And, mm -hmm. and like, that's what sticks with you. It's like, I'm sorry, sir, that we inconvenienced you for 10 seconds while we got, we're getting our tractor out of your way. You know, mm -hmm. you're welcome for fixing the trail so that it is open to you to use. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Some people are just so in their own head, up their own ass with that stuff that like, yeah. they don't have the foresight to think about the good that people have to do for right. people like them to actually enjoy this hobby. Right, or professional, whatever it is, you know, for that yeah. individual. But and we've seen more of that in you know since COVID. That it seems like it seems like that was a rare occurrence. And mm -hmm. um and and now since COVID, we have I don't know what it is. Is it that there are more new people out there that weren't outdoor people? They didn't kind of organically develop these outdoor ethics, or are did people just lose their minds and never got mm -hmm. them back after COVID? You know. A little bit of both. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. like the, the Venn diagram on the crossover, the little inside bubble there. It's probably pretty big. Um, yeah, that's interesting. We could do a really good like psychological study. Right. <laughs> Just yank people off the trail after they fuck something up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, it's like whenever I go out and recover somebody, everybody's like, Oh, you rent Jeeps, so you must that's how you must get a lot of recovery experience. It's like, 
no, it's my, it's not my, my Jeeps are the one calling stuff in. My people are the ones, mm -hmm. you know, haul, hauling in hikers that didn't bring enough water and stuff like that. It's, it's the guy that rented the, you know, Ford Fiesta at the, at the Phoenix airport. You know, those are the mm -hmm. people that I go out and recover out of the bottom of Diamondback Gulch or something. And it's like, and I can't help it. I always have to say, you know, like, what were you thinking exactly or your, or help me out here, walk me through your decision-making process. <laughs> you know, I just, I need yeah. to understand. And yeah. part of it is, you know, it's, it, it's academic. It's like, yeah, I mean, if I can understand, um, you know, what, what, how they thought this was a good idea, um, you know, maybe we can, you know, help that we can add that to our teaching. <laughs> Keep people. Yeah. Going. Somebody I, recently said that a lot of these incidents are partially ignorance on the part yeah. of people who have just no experience yeah. and um part of it you can just attribute to the fact that people are generally pretty stupid you know like they i it's... think they panic i think there's a there's a panic threshold for everybody mm -hmm. and um uh and if you've been outside a lot and you've gone camping or you've run out of gas or whatever you've kind of developed this oh okay you know i'm not going to die you know whatever now, of course, if you're in Florida and there's alligators, then that's the, my panic. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent callback. Yeah, run. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Especially, I guess there's this high-pitched noise now that I have to worry yeah. about, too. I just, yeah. <laughs> just only when you're close to the baby ones. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah it's, there's this this panic threshold, and then the, their, their decision-making uh, goes out the window. You know, it's like, well, we thought if we, we just kept going, it couldn't get any worse. Or we, we had to, you know, forwards at all costs or whatever it is, you know, Yeah, interesting. <laughs> Which is, it's funny you bring that up. I've had the Sequoia out in Utah before. I went out with my dad during the uh -huh. pandemic, just because we were supposed to, long story short, we were supposed to go to Iceland. Obviously the pandemic killed that. So we went to Southern Utah and hung out in Kanab for a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we were somewhere in the Grand Staircase Escalante and we started down a path and it looked awesome. And then we went around a corner and saw the first rock and went, no, no. we're going to go back. Good choice. The, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to become the issue. Like, right. I, <laughs> there, there's no yeah. pride lost for turning around or right. making a smart decision. Right. Um, I do think there's some, because I, I remember... God, I don't know how many years ago there was the fire in um, Glen Canyon in Colorado. And so 70 was closed. And so Google was just rerouting people off I-70. And there was like a dude in his Chrysler 300 on a dirt trail, like trying to get through where it mm -hmm. should have been four by four only. And yeah. he was like, well, that's where Google said to go. And I was like, you can right. still be the right. human and say no. Like <laughs> right. the first like, episode of The Office where would when they drive into the like. You know, yeah. yeah, they drive into the lake under sat nav. Like that shouldn't yeah. be a thing because you're the human in control. Right. Yep. Nina, is know your limits one of the first things you teach people? Yeah, we try to we try to teach them it's humility is what it boils down to. Cause it's like if you if you don't have that humility, you're not going to accurately assess your limitations, I think, you know. Yep. And so yep. um the interesting thing, of course, is that people that take that sign up to take a class with us it's like they're already they've already reached a level of humility that they're like i need professional help <laughs> that, but that's a good step that's you know right right leave the and ego so, at home kind of thing yeah and so a lot of times it's it's not it's not the people that take our classes that we really have to try to get that across i mean we we still try to make them conscious of that a lot of what we're trying to do is just teach them awareness um and uh, th that situational awareness, recognize when things aren't going as planned, recognize that the weather's changing, just situational awareness. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that the, 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 we're more likely to encounter someone on the trail during a class um, that is letting their ego make the choices than someone who's mm -hmm. actually registered to take a class with right. us. Live uh, lessons. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. We can pull up. I, I mean, I think half the time my, my class, my clients think that this was staged. We arranged this <laughs> like such a perfect cliche, yeah. you know, it's like, <laughs> you're like, Nope, this is just where we are guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, some are. classes do that. Some off-road yeah. classes deliberately, you know, get a vehicle stuck or, or yeah. you know, put somebody on the trail and it's supposed to be like, uh, 
you know, like a recovery situation that it happens in its natural element, you know, like right. stage. Yeah. But a lot of times, um, yes. Oh, ah, uh, thank you. Boy, yes, I'm sure there are more embarrassing ones than this you can find. <laughs> the The beauty is like, if I can, I can genuinely get stuck during a class and they will still give me credit that I did it on purpose. So <laughs> yeah, just bro, just play it off. It's just... Just, yeah, absolutely. I did this for a teaching moment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now this was, um, this one I actually did have to try really hard. That Jeep did not want to get stuck, you know? So I had to like put it in two wheel drive and drop it into the, worst hole in the sand I could find or whatever. But, um, but yeah, most of the time, like I'm the one getting stuck, uh, for the training classes because, you know, my Jeep's armored up and I don't care if I, you know, scratch the belly mm -hmm. and the sliders and yeah. stuff up. It's, uh, it's business you know, right a off. lot yeah. of our students are there Great. to learn not to scratch their, you know, $70,000 four by fours mm. or whatever. So that, that is not how much the Sequoia is. That's the good news. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably, you know, unfortunately, it's probably an average nowadays, you know, because I mean, yeah. seriously, the G wagons and the oh 392s and the, the, the 2024 392 yeah. starts at 90. Yeah. Starts. Wow. Yeah. Starts. Yeah. Yep. Which means I can find a six figure Wrangler. Oh, easy. Oh, yeah. The 25th yeah. The, uh, anniversary Rubicon. Yeah. I sorry. I know we've we've talked about like six figure escalades on the show before and thought that was silly, but like six figure Wrangler, like <laughs> okay, but if you got six figures to spend, are you gonna buy the no the, I don't care. Yeah, yeah, which one? yeah. <laughs> oh, no. if I got six figures to spend, I'm buying a 392 and going full Sean Holman on it. <laughs> <laughs> he does Dude, have a nice deep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I I only have a little bit of seat time in a 392 and I giggled the entire time. And I had, a, I had a person with yeah. me who'd never off-road and he's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I'm having a blast. Like, I'm exactly. broken. This you is my therapy. <laughs> yeah, you can't get in a 392 and not turn 12. And this is when people ask me, oh, well, aren't you getting one for the rental fleet? God, no. no. You're not putting anybody <laughs> else no in those. Way. Yeah, right. The liability <laughs> waiver you'd have to make them sign. <laughs> Be like, right? Pages. We're going to add pages and they're yeah. going to have to cover their own insurance. Like the company's yeah. out on this one, guys. This is on you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that's actually how we do it anyways. And that's okay, still good. You know, yeah. <laughs> any, any particular stories that you can or want to share about things going terribly wrong with a rental vehicle? Oh my gosh. My favorite is that, um, so especially like in Moab, and I did just sell the Moab operation. So um, we're down, uh, our Jeep, hmm. our public Jeep rentals are only, uh, we have a store in Sedona at this time, but uh, we're still obviously operating everything else in Moab. But um, the, 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 in Moab, of course, we had a long list of, you know, no, no trails, you know, the hmm. uh, forbidden trails or not recommended trails was the terminology that we use because you know, if you you do this trail, you're going, we're going to have an unpleasant conversation at the end of the day. And there, there's, you know, no, no way around that. So, um, so people think it's, you know, uh, you know, we don't, we, when you bring a Jeep bag damaged, it doesn't matter if it happened at the city market parking lot um, or on steel bender, you know, right. or the Canyon, it's um, the, the, the cost of repair from the body shop is the same amount, regardless of the location. <laughs> and, and, and so people and, come up with these elaborate stories. And and by the way, I mean the Jeeps are all GPS. So it's like, oh yeah, we we flop the oh. Jeep, we flop we flop the Jeep on chicken corners, you know, and it's like, okay, well, the tracker says you are on metal masher. That doesn't matter. The bill is XYZ. So you might as well at least yep. tell us a good story, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Also, um, that's that city market parking lots intense. That's not a normal uh, yeah. parking lot. I mean, seriously, we do have it on the you know that we have the red, yellow, green trails. That's a yellow trail. Is this yeah, trail? like it, yeah. <laughs> Ross, you might feel more comfortable with it because it is very. It is not standard on like which lane is directed the correct way. Like they're all slanted spots, yeah. and then some are straight, <laughs> and some are just drive through. Like, give me an obstacle. Is there are any <laughs> named obstacles on the trail? <laughs> city market parking lot. Right. Oh, it's the grocery yeah. store in Moab. <laughs> yes. The, the gas station side is the trickier. So definitely Dude, it's, yeah, gas station obstacle. Yeah. I'm I'm joking, but I'm not ah, joking. I, I, I see. I 
Yeah. yeah did you bring that up on Google Maps? I'm tired enough to be gullible tonight. That's, that's <laughs> right now. It's, things have gone badly over here, Liza Blake. Oh. Um, Nina, do you have a favorite kind of wheeling? Is it crawling because, you know, nature of territory? Yeah, and that's kind of the background I come from is more of the rock crawling world. And um, and overlanding is like, I mean, we just called it camping. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, as far as I can tell, the difference is the comma and the price tag. That's the only... I don't right. Know. <laughs> that's true. Or, or how many Instagrams you have for your vehicle oh, and true. Your, you right. know, your crew and all that. Right. True. Or, you know, if your car has its own Instagram account. Yeah. There yeah. you go. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's <laughs> um, but it, it's, uh, I honestly, it's a little bit of everything. Um, and it's, you know, people ask, what's your favorite trail? Usually it's whatever the last one I just finished today. That was like, oh, that was that was so awesome today you know <laughs> never get tired of it do you yeah yeah and uh, you know and I try to schedule my life you know we try to format our our calendar to follow the nice weather so we get to spend winter typically we're down in Glamis and the sand dunes you mm. know it's 70 degrees or whatever and, and um and then you know spring and fall in Moab a lot and then you know summer up on the Rubicon Trail and and stuff mm. like that yeah right <laughs> See, out by the lake. I, yeah. I have never i've never thought to myself like i need to go drive the rubicon like it's just not and it hadn't been on my radar for something i wanted to do mm. but you just said ooh. but <laughs> but yeah after spending three days crawling around on rocks in utah like now a little part of me is like god i kind of want to get up there now yeah i think <laughs> i think it's one of the only trails that i'd be happy as a passenger in a really well built truck, you know, mm. just to like take it in instead yeah. of worry about. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot a little bit for you, Nina, because you, you we we had Derek Powell on the show, uh, and dude, awesome. who I will call a friend. Um, yeah. Yes, Derek's birthday was two days ago. Happy belated birthday, Derek! Oh. Derek, Derek Derek is aware. Oh, like that's that right. Are friends. Well, yeah. I think he said forty eight. I think I that's was it. shocked. Yep. Yeah. Same. I was yeah. shocked by that. I was like, Derek, you don't look 48. <laughs> um, but like they took some rigs on the Rubicon for that show <laughs> that weren't exactly ready. How, how would you, did you get to be a part of that? How did, how did that yes. work? Uh, so when they were, and, and I don't want to like destroy your illusions or anything, but reality TV is very, very scripted. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, no, no, we, we're, we're, We've had yeah. the producers on twice. Like we're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's like okay, three three cars start the Rubicon. One of them has an exo cage. Which one's gonna roll? <gasps> right. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I love that. That's the first image that came up to me when I started to search for images too. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! That's awesome. And I just sold that car. I actually sold it to the guy um, who bought the blue um, Suzuki, or it's not the Suzuki. It's the the Geo version or whatever but the tracker yeah. yeah and so um yeah there's there's candy her name is candy yeah <laughs> <laughs> who was driving that at the time uh rutledge, uh, rutledge. rutledge was okay. yeah <clears throat> yep and he had had some a shoulder injury so we needed to make sure to roll the car on the passenger side so we kept him you know clear of any potential impact and, and crunchies yeah and crunchies and the rubicon trail is very narrow in most places and so the trick was also getting to a spot where we were going to be for hours and mm -hmm. so we didn't want to block traffic and so we picked a spot there where there was a couple of bypasses around in case uh yeah chris needed. did we talk to we had tanner on i uh, probably a year and a half ago now did we yeah, talk forever to ago about what did that even come up the rubicon i think we did briefly because that's not the first time i've shared that image on the show <laughs> okay, um, i'll have to revisit that episode but yeah, Nina, did you, um, so that was the yeah. old Top Gear America with Tanner yeah. Rutledge. Yeah, and yeah. Top, Top Gear and... USA, yeah, with uh, Tanner and Rutledge and Adam. Yep. And we're the, just all wonderful to work with, you yeah. The current Motor Trend Top Gear America or USA or whatever they're I think it's America. It's America. <laughs> with yeah. Dax. They did. <laughs> yeah. With, yeah, yeah, with Dax and, uh, and Jethro yeah. and who's... Rob Cordry. Rob Cordry, right. Rob Cordry, yeah. yeah. We've got to they, work with them too, yeah. You, you were part of that production as well? Yeah. 
which trail was that it wasn't Pritchett, was it, it uh we was... were that with them we did cinders up in flagstaff and that was where um they had a the z the van yes and, um, mm -hmm. what was the other car oh well it was what a was Toyota it? with like a house on the back, wasn't it? That's right. It was like yeah. a homemade camper. On it was it. a, yeah. a <laughs> first gen. It was they called they kept calling it a, I think a forerunner, but it was actually a when it was just called the Toyota pickup. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was up at Cinder's OHB area outside. Okay. Of yeah. yeah. And There's... they did, I think they also ran another trail somewhere in the southwest with a it was an H2. A V oh across gosh. and what well, and I can't remember the third one. I just remember there was a V across because I still love those. V across and there was yeah. one in your group too. In the yes, group. there was. Yes, and I, I owned they one. They got knuckles for me. I was like right on wheel in that sucker. You don't see well, those. <laughs> and it's a shorter gosh. wheelbase right. than a two door Wrangler. Yeah, that's what started to like, like it's yeah. a good time. Tell yeah. it's a good time. <laughs> um. Ross, I can't, it was an H2 Hummer and what else? And a V across, and I, I can't remember for the life of me what the third vehicle was. Because that was the one, I think that I was the one. I was involved in that one, whatever. That one, okay. They killed the Hummer. Yeah, well, like, Dax like rolled the wheel. <clears throat> like yeah, he broke control broke, arms. Broke both tie rods at the same time or something like that, which, you know. I can't even find images, dude. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. But, I'm, pre I'm pretty good at images and I'm, <laughs> I suck at that. So Nina, can we talk about Rebel Rally for of a bit? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how'd you get involved? Uh, so it started um, when Emily Miller was putting this together and it was still like a big secret. So this was back in 2015. She reached out to me to see if I would be interested in providing rentals for it. Like, would I mind, you know, prepping vehicles so they were rally ready, you know, for like, especially international teams to come over and compete. And uh, I was like, you know, and she's starting to tell me a little bit about the rally. And I was very familiar with the Gazelle rally mm -hmm. um, because I had followed her, you know, her being the first American, to, uh, she was the first American to go over and compete in the Gazelle rally. And, um, and I think that was 2009. And then, um, and I had subsequently started training women who were going over to compete in the gazelle rally. And that's very different than the rebel rally as far as kind of the fundamental driving uh, approaches. But um, uh, she asked if I would be interested in providing rentals for it. And I said, well, yes, but I want to compete in it. This just sounds like fun. I just want to do it just the first year, just to, to mm -hmm. support the event, you know, and be part of it and stuff like that. And then, and then whatever. But then of course I've competed almost every year since because it is just an amazing assemblage of of people both the staff and the competitors it's just top rate so and you've yeah. used power wagons and wranglers now right yeah and a couple of rebels too so um four years hmm. with ram trucks and then the last two years with jeep and i skipped the okay. 19 yeah so have you always had the same navigator no, I've actually had uh, four different teammates. I've had, um, so the in the photo there, uh, I think that was 2018. That's um, Chris Main from Paris, France. Okay. And, uh, yeah, her and I uh, teamed up two years together. And, um, uh, and she's just wonderful. You know, she's got a lot of rally experience, both driving and, and navigating. And also, um, uh, she's literally a rock star. She's just uh, this amazing singing voice. So we've during the galas, we'd always talk her into getting up on stage and singing. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yep. Um, but the first year I was, uh, Candy Jacobson uh, was my navigator. Uh, we connected uh, through Scott Brady um, at uh, Overland Journal. And then we had uh, Chris Main um, uh, in the next couple of years. And then Chris couldn't make it over for 2020, obviously for COVID. Um, mm -hmm. bor borders were not open for her to come over. So Tana White jumped in to be my navigator at the last minute. Um, and she was wonderful. Um, she was, uh, I knew, I mean, at that point, you know, you're, we were, we were like six or eight weeks out from the rally. And it was just like, I, I just need somebody, you know, then my number one priority is someone who I can have fun for seven days in the car. And we're not, you know, we're just going to mm -hmm. have fun and not kill mm -hmm. each other. Cause I mean, we, <laughs> we felt so lucky to just be having the rally at all, you know, right. um, in 2020, we, you know, and all, 
everything else. You just didn't know what was going to happen, you know? Also in, in the capacity of not killing each other. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've heard the stories firsthand. Um, I think Chris, we talked about it. Rochelle talked about it and I can't maybe you want Sedona, but it, yeah. the, the Rebecca crazy. and Emmy, Lynn, Sedona Lynn, and Lynn. Lynn. Like, yeah, I I like, remember, no, I don't think it was good. Emmy, but was it the, um, the crazy dust storm that oh, yeah, took that out was, camp uh, and everybody ended up just sleeping in their cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2021. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think well, we there, talked it, about that with Richard and Ashley, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that was I mean, Dust to Glory. That makes sense. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, don't don't hate your co-pilot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moral of the story. Yeah. It might be like, Huddle up with them, you know, and you got to it, it. The rally teaches you a lot about yourself. And and sometimes you find out it's you. It's not them, you know, so. <laughs> uh, that's funny. And that's yeah. that's great. If you can learn that lesson and, and grow and move on, that's great. And some people just don't learn that lesson, I guess. But <laughs> I, I feel like I I'm, I'm not communicating that well enough to my children because sometimes it is oh. them like it is <laughs> them. Like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> That is funny. Oh. <laughs> so, Chris, uh, any uh, any place you want to go? I know we're we're you know coming up so, on our hour. Di differences between running a four by e, running a, a power wagon, like, and I and I know terrain is completely yeah. different through the Rebel. Like, yeah, I mean, honestly, um, the uh, the Wrangler is just it it just makes and Emily Miller hates it when I say this, but the the Jeep just makes it so easy. It it really does. It's um. Uh, and of course the the power wagon is super capable, but it's still a lot of real estate to move, you know, through that trail and, mm -hmm. uh, and through those trails and through the sand dunes and stuff. And so, um, the, you know, then the, the, uh, the four by E's just got power to spare. It's like, it takes all of my tricks to get, um, you know, a power wagon or, or the rebel or, um, or a non four by E <laughs> not counting the 392 uh you know wrangler up to the top of like oldsmobile hill you know or or you know pick mm. the biggest dune in in big dune or whatever and the four by e is just like yep we'll just go straight to the top and then do you want to launch off the top because i've got extra power if you need it you know so it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh, well that sounds like a fun way to break things <laughs> it's interesting you say that because like i always thought about the four by e as like it's just a turbo four cylinder like i don't think i want that <laughs> but but I guess I haven't had any real motor. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had any real yeah. world experience with one. Yeah. And so I haven't been able to like hey. all right, hopefully there's a rally coming up in the spring. So hopefully uh near yeah. me. And they generally bring Jeep normally brings stuff. So I'm gonna make a yeah. point this year of getting in the four by E. Definitely drive the four by E because yeah, it doesn't get so when you get in the 392. So I know we already bonded over our you know, turning <laughs> 12 when we get in the 392. <laughs> So the four by E, you feel more much like a responsible adult. You know, I'm not destroying the planet. You know, I have hybrid power here, but I'm still cruising town looking for Camaros to smoke at the stoplights. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's amazing to hear you say that because now I want one. <laughs> <laughs> they are very, very intriguing. Yeah, we'll say. I, and, I used to have a longer commute, and I literally mm -hmm. was like shopping four by E Wranglers because it was like. Mm -hmm. I think it was um, 38 miles one way. And I was like, listen, if I can click off 32 of those miles on the battery yeah, and then start running that turbo for the rest of the time, like I'm saving yeah. a bunch of money. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, you know, it's weird. Like once you get above because of the aerodynamics of a Wrangler, I guess I should say lack of aerodynamics. I would say the box. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> running the sheet of plywood. Much um, the, uh, there. The uh, you once you get up to I don't know fifty five sixty usually the motor will kick on anyways you know it's okay. like no, we've got way too much resistance to overcome here or whatever mm -hmm. so so if you know if you can do your commute um under forty five miles an hour yeah you can do the whole thing in in electric you know so it's just it it's it's weird to try to figure out how to you know maximize that vehicle but and I also just... the huh. I say I heard you say boost mode. I don't know. <laughs> like I heard you <laughs> it's uh so just so you know, so at the stoplight, what it is, you want to be an e-save 
That okay. way the motor's already running. The gas motor's already running. Electric is, of course, available all the time. And then you want it in four high auto. So all four tires are gripping, you know. And mm -hmm. I always like, I let that Camaro creep out, you know, about halfway for the, through the intersection. And then I'll punch it, you know. So, oh, so you yeah. just go flying. Just to give so funny. <laughs> I didn't realize the hope. four by, I don't know why it never occurred to me that the four by eight could be yeah. run in rear wheel drive. Yeah, it's it has all of it. It's got yeah, two high, it's got two high, four high auto, yeah. uh, four high part time, and then four low. Right. Yeah. Because the the three ninety two is full time four wheel drive. It is which yeah. you can get yeah. like a taser or something, and you know, program to be right. You know, just a a, a right. vessel for throwing money at tire companies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're already exploding gas at an incredible <laughs> rate. Like, why oh, not man. explode tires too, Ross? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you got the means, you know. And that sound, I mean, you know, until I think until our generation dies off, um, that the sound of the V8 is always going to give us that. Yep. <sighs> I know. I'm definitely, definitely not looking for an exhaust for the GX. Definitely not. <laughs> it just, I just, it, you know, it's uh -huh. like, for the audio listener. Ross is winking like crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Let's see what's on that other screen. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> on my bank account, which is saying no exhaust. Um, so Nia, what year's your truck again? Uh, 18. <laughs> it's an 18. And I know there's a Magnaflow and an AFE oh. and a couple others. But yeah, the Magnaflow is an overland. So it, the tip gets tucked up high and chopped. So it doesn't get crunched like, you know, every other exhaust I've had on a truck off-road. There was a uh, 100 series in a parking lot by me the other day who had a high clearance rear bumper on and he hadn't moved the exhaust yet. And it just looks so silly with the, like the exhaust is normally yeah. tucked up pretty good under the stock bumper, but like with mm -hmm. a high clearance bumper, like it was just like this lonely muffler and tip just like hang. I was like, he's going to bash the crap out of that. Like, or that up. truck's not going off road. <laughs> I mean, I, he was in a parking lot, so I can't really judge him either way. <laughs> right, right. It wasn't City Market, I can tell you that. <laughs> All right. So, Nina, are there any vehicles that you would like to offer that you have yet to? Oh, that I have yet to. Well, of course, we're uh, the hot thing that we're watching these days is I haven't had one come through class yet. And, well, obviously haven't, is the new, the Grenadier. Say that again? Oh, the... Um, oh, the Ineos? 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 Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. even yeah. know how to yeah. pronounce it. I, I've heard Scott Brady pronounce it four different ways. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ineos, Ineos, Grenadier, Ineos. Grenadier. I, I'm hearing the, the, I've got um uh, one of the gals that works with me uh, training. She's been working the event. Um, You know, they've been putting on events for media drives around the country. Very, yeah. You know, they yeah. just did one. Is it like Scotland? It was like two hours from me. Oh, okay. They, yeah. they did a media drive and it was, um, it was one hour of seat time. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. So, just so four couldn't... hours round trip in your car to drive yep. their car for one hour, for one hour. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, if you had a four by E it would be that terrible on gas. <laughs> so, yeah. These things are super intriguing though. Yeah. Um, and it's, what is it? It's a twin, it's a not, not twin turbo. It's a turbo inline six BMW engine. It's and a BMW. Gearbox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's a two-speed transfer case and everything. Yeah, these are, they'll right. be interesting to see if they actually make it to our, you know, on the ground here and aren't just kind of like, yeah, like lucid, you know, fluttering away a bit. Do you remember, uh, um, I think I think it was Brian Doerr, um, Explore Elements on Instagram. He, he had had seat, I don't know if he had had seat time, but he'd been around it and he was like, it, that was, he's obviously got his built GX, but he was like this, he goes, this one's on my list because it was like 60 to 70 grand. Yeah. And like the, I'm going to share the interior photo that I just found of it because like uh -oh. <laughs> the interior to in this thing is just, that's ridiculous to me. Like, right. I think I've built more of those on their build and price tool than any other vehicle <laughs> in my life. <laughs> yeah. What's the most expensive you got it to, Russ? Oh, I, I do. I can't afford it even with no options. So I don't look at the dollar figure. Well, that's, that's most new vehicles for me. <laughs> yeah. It's, shit, same. It's same. I need it to be a write-up, but the BMW shifter does stand out. Like it looks got a BMW gear shifter. Like, yeah, it's right. Okay. All right. So you're looking forward to, uh, 
yeah that's the, that's these. the next fun thing we get to play with you know um of course we had rivians we you know we've had some rivians out and um and then uh like our first what i call our first um civilian rivian that we had in a class it was great because we had the usual mix of forerunners and and you know rovers and jeeps and mm. And everybody's coming through the obstacles, and then he, and then the Rivian shows up, and everybody's phones come up. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it the truck or the SUV? The, the T or the it was S? the truck. It was the truck. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're not. We're just starting to see the SUVs now coming. You know, but mm. yeah, they seem like a good time. Yeah, they're heavy though. Like, yeah, heavier than a power wagon. Um, not, not, well, not my power wagon. <laughs> no, I was saying, not the way Nita runs a power yeah, wagon. Yeah, yeah. I was okay. going to say, it's like, it's the, the power wagon, I think the curb weight on her was 7,200 pounds, so comparable, but, you know, just like, you know, That's... but then we add, I, I throw in my makeup kit and it's already, you know, 8,500 pounds. So, yeah. Yep. <laughs> my makeup so listener at home doing math, her makeup kit was 1,300 pounds. Like, yes, that was a big yes. jump there. My makeup <laughs> kit is like sliders and wheels and, and you know, there's at least two snatch blocks and, you know, mm -hmm. 20 feet of chain. And, you know, anyways. But... <laughs> 20 feet of chain, good for Are there any trails, places in the world that you want to explore off-road that you have yet to? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, most of, I've been, you know, mostly on the North American continent and, um, uh, it would be, um, I do want to get to South America. I want to do some, some chili, yeah. you know, I think, uh, some, um, like Patagonia, like the, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I'm trying to think if, uh, you know, maybe get over to North Africa at some point, just because, you know, I've trained so many people specifically to go to like Morocco, you know, mm -hmm. so it might be fun to go. Interesting. Go check out dunes in other places, you know. <laughs> See how the sand there. differs. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Still yeah. sandy. Bye. Still, <laughs> sand is still yeah. sand is sand, right? Captain's <laughs> lie. Day 500. Right. Sand is still sand. Still gets everywhere. Right. right. Yeah. That, I mean, to be honest, that was my favorite part of the Moab trip is that we really weren't on that much sand. Yeah. It was just, it was rocks mainly. Like it was, I didn't yeah. come home like, there was some dust on the truck, but like, I didn't come home with like a floor mat full of mm. red dust. Like right. it was. I do love shaking sand out of the floor mat though. It's so satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> I did it in the middle of the trip and somebody else was like, you know what? That's a great idea. And I was like, what? It's like, it's just, just dump your floor mat, but it's not hard. <laughs> like I, I have friends who have like, they wash their vehicles the first night of a trip. Oh. I'm like, that's like, they only wash like, you know, axles and brakes and tires and you know u joints and everything and like that's kind of brilliant like <laughs> if something goes wrong you know first thing next morning you can actually get to it without being horribly covered i mean you know everything up here is mud so i was gonna say yeah we yeah. don't have you played in uh you played in the mud at all oh yeah it's um when when things get wet out here as they were this winter of course we get um we have like what we, you know, we call our greasy mud. We get that bentonite mud. We get this, uh, this picture is from Sedona. So Sedona mud is pretty benign because it's a very sandy layer. So it, okay. like underneath the bottom of that mud puddle is going to be just a, a nice firm bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll get that, that, that clay layer, that bentonite layer, especially around Moab, some of the Moab trails and stuff, which just gets gooey and greasy. And then we get up on the rim above Sedona, you know, around the Flagstaff area, we get that brownie batter mud, mm -hmm. you know, that's just that's the worst. big yeah. glops. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So, yep. Very, very, very quickly find the difference between an all terrain, mud terrain, and yeah. when it makes no difference at all. Yeah. <laughs> it just it, chocolate glazed donuts, what you're yeah. trying to drive on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Chris is like that sounds awful. <laughs> that sounds it yeah. is, and then you just park on a sprinkler, you know, for a couple of hours after. I <laughs> literally, yeah, I, I I only bought a sprinkler to throw under the truck. Yeah, yeah. I was like, the, I don't have a lot of four by four hacks. Like the uh, my buddy Ron, who was like, just put a sprinkler under your truck, and I was like, yep. that was life changing. Yep. <laughs> like, life -changing. Yeah, exactly. The automatic car wash, they were like, you need to go around again, try again. Like we didn't get it, like. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not paying again guys like I'm, right. I'm impressed that they let you in the automatic Same. car wash. Yeah. yeah usually around here we got to sneak into the uh do-it-yourself car washes right <laughs> it's the midwest they're used to farm trucks so like they'll mm. they'll, they'll be yeah, okay 
<laughs> those ra those ranchers with rich guy money, like rich guy yep. money. That didn't right. make sense. <laughs> right. uh, you would know what you meant. Yeah. Yeah. What you meant. What's Sweet. uh what's on the the quick list of coming up for you, Nina? So coming up this month is um I'm teaching a winching two oh two class this Saturday, so that'll be fun. And then um uh and then Overland Expo is coming up, Overland mm -hmm. Expo West. And I will be teaching there uh, in the Overland Skills area all weekend. Nice. So, yeah. 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 West awesome. West is intense because I was there last year um, the whole time, but I was working at the time. And yeah. every time I would like go to wander around, I'd be like, oh, I've seen the whole show. And they'd be like, did you notice this area over here? And I was like, I never got like, right. I feel like I missed two thirds of the show. Like the Winchester Mystery House of, you know, the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Ma Mountain West was a little easier to get around to everybody. But yeah. Expo West was definitely Flagstaff was gorgeous, but yeah, yep. incredibly yep. windy last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet. Uh, so that's May, and then yeah, June we have uh, we start prepping for Rebel or um, Rebel. Ooh, well, we're always prepping for Rebel, uh, <laughs> prep, prepping for Rubicon Trail season. So mm -hmm. usually around the beginning, middle of June, you know, we're shipping jeeps up to get ready for that season. And um, oh, and then I'm going to spend a few days out in California um, at a facility of a manufacturer that I cannot disclose. Uh, <laughs> and interestingly enough this is not a manufacturer who has had something in the four-wheel drive market um hmm. but they are working on it apparently so interesting yeah. <laughs> yeah, now, so now i'm interesting. now i'm curious because <laughs> yeah. i'm trying to go through the list in my head of like what would we normally discuss here and pick a brand that wouldn't be there yeah right exactly they, they have oh. not had a four low option in the past so oh. ever <laughs> historically ever uh ever and they not that they've been in uh in the states for that long either so hmm yeah hmm, hmm. <laughs> i'm trying to think it's either a country that used to be a part of the access powers or is now a country that's split with the north and south and uh and that's like that's where my oh, two so my funny. minds got we don't have to get yep. closer to that yep. we don't have to get, I don't want to get right, yeah. in trouble for that like i like, <laughs> want to keep her working with them so yeah <laughs> I may have just had to sign a release waiver because I might be yeah, driving some of their cars. Stuff and yeah. Yeah, lawyers and stuff. And, yeah, right. Exactly. Well, my, <laughs> mine was more the, you're going to drive my vehicle in a not aggressive, horrible manner at our oh, rally. And I was like, I yes. My favorite <laughs> term was um, from FCA, now Stellantis. And it was, um, you, you, you should not be driving in a uh, remorselessly careless manner. <laughs> remorselessly Remorse careless so it's okay if you're careless if you feel bad about it afterwards like exactly. <laughs> i feel terrible is, about what i did there that is such an fca needlessly <laughs> complex thing to say <laughs> oh, so i feel funny. like nina's nina's clients from the jeep rentals will be like no 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 i felt bad about it i felt that she's I, like the I body shop's the same it. number guys like exactly like, yeah. exactly <laughs> i'm not a giant oem sorry yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, sweet. I'm going to wrap the show up real quick. Um, you can rate and review this show on Apple Podcasts. I, this has got to be an old show notes I copied here because I haven't mentioned Apple Podcasts in forever. Spotify, just all just all wherever places. you listen to podcasts. We're most places now. If if you discover, if you heard the show and you weren't able to use it on your normal service, shoot me an email. Like, let's. I've, I've got it lots of places. So um, you can like and subscribe on YouTube if you watch this one. Uh, you can follow Nina and she's at Barlow underscore adventures on Instagram or uh, the Barlow adventures website is Barlow's with an S dot yeah. us. Very good. Um, and you're still on, you're on YouTube as well. You're at Jeep school yeah. on YouTube. Yes. At Jeep school or Trailwise with Nina is kind of what we've been calling some of the, the more of the kind of technical tips that we've been trying to put together as yeah. a resource for people. So, yeah, I definitely, yeah, I'm, you, you're high on my list of like, I, Four by four education, I feel like is I've done Jeep stuff. I've done all kinds of stuff. Like I would rather just learn how I was supposed to be doing it. Does that make <laughs> sense? Habits, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm the wrong way the first time. <laughs> Personally, I've never done recovery. If like if I got stuck, I let other people control it and tell me what to do, kind of thing. I, mm -hmm. I think that's high on my list for figuring out what I should be doing there. Awesome. Because awesome. maybe, maybe I want to hide a 
winch behind the front bumper of that Lexus. I'm not sure. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Slipper, the slope gets slippery. Yeah, but... every night, every time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, lastly, you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. Ross is no, not like the one from Friends on Instagram. Still, <laughs> still. If somebody has an idea for what I can change it to that makes there... me hate myself less, please send it my way. Don't, <laughs> don't tell him. Keep it this way. I've got it memorized now. <laughs> and I'm at Overlanding Dad, and that's it. We did a show. Thank you so much, Nina. Hey, Thanks, thank Nina. you. It was fun, guys. Thanks. <laughs> it was.